How are you? I'm listening to Amy Winehouse here. This album is just brilliant. It's lovely to revisit because I haven't listened to it in a good while, a um, couple of years. But this is the first track on it, a very famous song. They tried to make me eat a kebab and I said no, no, no. <laughs> I love Amy Winehouse, God rest her, she was fabulous. Um, what do I want to tell you? Uh, this is a video I'm going to do from a YouTube channel. Haven't done one in a long, long time, so I really want to share this one with you. Uh, I've done, um, there's been a lot of firsts in my life over the last few months and they've been brilliant, a lot, most of them have been brilliant. Uh, I went on holidays to Mallorca to friends of mine, Annette and, and Callum, and uh, I went snorkelling for the first time, which was absolutely amazing, I don't know why I didn't do it years ago. Um, it was brilliant just to see all the fish under the sea and uh, Annette's sons used to dive in and throw bread and, and then all the fish would come around and I was there swimming with them. It was fantastic. And then I also swam in caves, which was amazing. That was just amazing. That was all amazing altogether. You go in with torches. And then I was paddle boarding, which I'd never done before. So that was another first. And I was kayaking, which I had never done before. And I loved every minute of it. So there's been a lot of those and another first. Um, they were all the enjoyable ones. They were absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to do an awful lot more of them. I'm going to actually buy a kayak and go out to the Blessington Lakes here. I'll go somewhere on it because kayaking is fantastic. Um, another first that I had, uh, just before I went to Spain, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And initially that was a quite a shock. It had happened, it came on board when I was in Israel on holidays and I noticed that um, my eyesight, these glasses are for distances. And I noticed at distances things were starting to shimmer and I thought, oh, I need new glasses. And uh, which reminds me of when I realised at first that I need glasses, if you don't mind me going off topic a bit. Um, I was about 21, I was working in a record company and my eyesight was always brilliant, but in that time there was no health and safety like there is now. So I was in an office within a building, so there was no natural sunlight. So I'd be going into work at half eight in the morning and in the winter months that was dark and I'd leave at about half four, half five in the evening when it was still dark so I was not seeing any sunlight at all because I was in an office in the middle of a building and um, it affected my eyesight and how I realised that was I was standing waiting on a bus and <laughs> I'm squinting trying to see what bus is coming along and I see one coming and I said to this woman who was standing beside me I said to her Mrs would you tell me what number that bus is and she looked up and she says son that's a JCB <laughs> <laughs> so I had to realise then I needed to go and get my eyes tested. So I've been wearing glasses ever since. But as I said, um, that's how I know there was something wrong. And I was drinking an awful lot of water and I was thirsty all the time. And uh, so I went to the doctors when I came home and he said, how have you been? And I said, well, I'm thirsty all the time and uh, my eyesight is not as good as it used to be, blah, blah. And then he said, well, that could be your blood sugars. So he took blood sample and came back that I have type 2 diabetes which was a shock at the beginning but then I very quickly realized this is a great excuse for me to live a healthier lifestyle um, <clears throat> because I've always been I'm one of these people that say I'm going to do this I'm going to do that I'm going to give up eating cakes I'm going to give up eating sweets I'm going to go on a diet and they last for a while I mean I'm sure most of you've been on diets and they last a while and you go back off them and the weight goes back on and everything like this but with this I have to stick to a routine, a regime of what food and what sugars I can take. So that's brilliant for me. I just look at it this way. This is making me, this is ensuring that I have uh, a healthy lifestyle. Um, there's no going off it like I used to do every year, all the time with diets and going to gyms and you get into good shape and then you stop going and everything just piles back on. So I'm looking at the, the positive side of that. So this is wonderful for me and I'm not having any problems with it at all. Um, as I said, they were looked at giving me insulin, but then they decided that I didn't need it and they can treat it with um, tablets. So all is good. Everything is great, really. So I think that's it. Um, just wanted to let you know that. Oh, goggle box. That's coming back in September and I can't wait for that to start. Um, that's going to be fantastic. Um, I think they're looking for some new families, Gogglebox Ireland. Um, and that's, I love working on that show. It is just absolutely brilliant. It is amazing.
Um, what else is there? The Panto. The Panto is coming up. It's Aladdin. I'm starring in it and it's on in the Olympia Theatre from the 21st of December. Um, I know a lot of you from the UK are coming over. Um, you're booking your flights and your hotels now because they're quite cheap to book so far in advance. And uh, then booking tickets to come to the show. And any of you who do come to the show, come backstage afterwards um, and say hello to me and meet me. I'd love to see you. Um, so you won't be just coming to see the show. Like you will, like I will want to talk to you and I will want to say hello because I will appreciate it very much, if, especially if you're travelling from the UK. Um, but it'll be a good idea. Like if you come after Christmas, you're going to get the sales as well. So you're going to have loads of things to do, and the sales in Dublin are fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think. What else is there? Oh, I'm just nearly finished writing my book, um, and that's coming out for Christmas. I am really, really, really enjoying that. Um, I thought it might be a bit of a slog. I thought it might be difficult to get the amount of words that's needed, but it's not because it's bringing back some lovely memories. Um, the, the idea of the book was that I was going to talk about uh, my life, but also interwoven with stories about my relationship with my mother, because um, as you all know, my mother has dementia and I've been campaigning for dementia awareness over a long time. So the publishers wanted to do it this way, which I thought was a lovely idea. So uh, I've been writing that and a memory triggers another memory. And uh, I've, had, I've remembered things that I had locked away that I had forgotten about for f over 50 years, some of them, like they really have. Like there's one, I was, there was one story um, that I was in, it just reminded me of it. I was in the Shelburne recently and I was having lunch. It's a lovely hotel up at Stephen's Green in Dublin, a gorgeous hotel. And um, it reminded me that my mother, every time she went into town, um, women are weird. Uh, and, I know, <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest way. Women are weird. They look at things like uh, nice toilets. If they go into a place, if the toilets are nice, that sort of sets the standard for everything else. <laughs> and you go in and say, what was it like? Oh, the toilets were magnificent. The toilets were beautiful. And you go, Ugh. But anyway, my mother was like that. And she would always go into the Shelburne Hotel um, to use the bathroom. And that's all. She never had lunch there, she never stayed there, she never had dinner there, she never had a drink there. Um, she just said she's passing and I used to say to her, you're not embarrassed going in? And she said, no, no. And the doorman, the concierge in his uniform and everything, his livery, he would say, as she'd go in and he'd say, um, good morning, madam, or good afternoon, madam. And she'd say, hello, how are you? And he'd hold the door open for her and she'd go in and she'd go to, and he knew. And she'd go down and use the bathroom and then she'd be going out and he'd say, Bye bye, madam. See you next week, madam. And she'd be delighted with herself. And there was me thinking she never spent a penny in the play. Well, no, she did actually spend a penny, but that's all she spent. <laughs> um, so I was so I was writing down a memory about that in the book, and then it dawned on me another memory just came back out of nowhere, and um, it was actually my auntie, and my mother's sister. When we were kids, um, I don't know what words you use. There's lots of different words that people, families use for farting. Um, they would say whatever they would say, rude, that's a rude noise or whatever. Um, but my auntie used to say this weird one. She used to say, if somebody farted, whether it was me, my brother, my sister, whatever, whoever did it, or the, even the dog, and we used to have a boxer dog, and because we'd feed him from the table, he was always farting. Um, we'd feed him everything, which we shouldn't really do. Uh, we shouldn't have done, <clears throat> and he was a big fat thing. Rusty was his name. He belonged to me brother. But anyway, we were... Uh, the dog farted one day, and my auntie said, who sent a telegram? And we were all looking at her. She's talking about telegram. <laughs> who sent a telegram? And we were looking, and she says, who sent a telegram? And I said, what do you, what do you mean, who sent a telegram? And she says, that smell, she says, that's a telegram from Ockyland. So some, so somebody is sending a telegram from Ockyland to say Mr. Shite is on the way. <laughs> I thought, I thought that was priceless. I know when you think of it, someone said a telegram from Ockyland to say Mr. Shite was on the way. A perfect way of describing it. But the, the, the extremes that people will go to just so as they don't 
say use bad language my mother never used it she hated it she actually couldn't stand it um, she just wouldn't use it at all um, I wish I was a bit more like her but anyway there you go um, I think that's about everything for now uh, I'll be back on I'm going to do these videos much more regular um, it's just that things have been happening I've been writing the book and uh, that's been taking me a while that's been taking up all my time and I've been loving doing it um, but there that's what I'm up to now the book Gogglebox Ireland the panto and then the book's going to be released and then there's going to be um, a lot of promo around that and um, so everything is all good with me and I hope everything is all wonderfully good with you too I'm sure it is anyway see you at the panto come over to Dublin and see the show and come backstage and meet me listen it's Aladdin it's in the Olympia Theatre um, so just book tickets come over it'll be a great weekend or a great few days break for you after the Christmas anyway listen all the best talk to you very soon bye bye